if you've lost a brother and you're, you have experienced what loss feels like, um, Sviso, we are with you. I think all of us here, we are with all of you. Ngela Pagamisa O Mage Ruth Ngosi, who is representing uh, Solomon Yerende, uh, who's, who's mother, Solomon Yerende's mother, could not unfortunately be here with us this morning uh, because she has taken ill. Government, South Africa. Uh, following Mam Ruth is the representative of the former miners and their families, um, the person who reached out to Mr. Mashaba during the People's Dialogue um, that was launched last December 2019, uh, who pleaded to say that, you know, they have done all they could, all the efforts to try and get uh, this container retrieved from being underground, trapped for more than four years now. Um, I'd like to call up the representative of the families and, their, and the minors, Mr. Uheri Mazibuko, to address us. Uh, good morning, everybody, members of the media, uh, our powerful, beloved president, Mr. Herman Mashaba, our legal uh, representative, members of the families. My name is Harry Mazibugo. Uh, what happened now in a couple of minutes ago, me as a leader of the people, is what I'm facing every day. So, we are the people uh, from Lily Mine, and we've been camping outside the mine for, for 513 days today. The reason for us to do so is because uh, it was over three years waiting for a solution waiting for families, waiting for closure. There are unions, labor uh, representatives in South Africa. We've got government in various departments, but there was no solution and there was no communication amongst ourselves and whoever might help so that is why we took it upon ourselves to go and camp inside the mine so that we'll put pressure to our government, especially DMRE in particular, as the regulator in the industry. What happened then? The intervention from our government was not the one we expected. Because instead of getting assistance, we were assaulted by 
South African police officers. That's the only and a quicker inter intervention before we mark two weeks we are assaulted by our own government calling us unlawful invaders. Yet the very same government had an inquiry in 2017 that outlines that the mine collapsed due to negligence of the mine management because they were told that the mine eventually is going to collapse, but they didn't take that. So we are facing that. So I cannot go much more into details because most of the South African people, they know the issue of lily mine, but I like to, to ask the question because we've got a thousand questions uh, within got a single answer from our government. What is it that we have done wrong? Is this how we build South Africa together? Is this how we fight unemployment rate? Is this Batupili? I don't know the answer. But we like to thank uh, Mr. Mashaba for coming up with an idea of the People's Dialogue whereby we get hold of him. So now we've got a, a new baby in South Africa called Action SA, and they are still assisting us. So we believe that South, in South Africa there's going to be change because since that intervention, we are, our dignity is restored now. We are respected now because before going to camp uh, in the mine, we did send correspondences to our government, DMRE. We sent emails that what's happening. So now by this date, because we arrived at the mine on the 30th of April 2019, targeting the following day, which was the 1st of May, Waker's Day. So we had that idea that we, we, we are unable to celebrate Waker's Day somewhere else while our colleagues are still there underground. The mine management are saying nothing in terms of retrieving that contain. DMRE as the regulator is saying nothing, even today, because the question is, DMRE said they are halting the rescue operation because it's unstable. Therefore, they made a recommendation that the mine management must sink a new decline, which is the way that goes to the underground workings. The response of the company was that we haven't got money to fund that project. And today the company is still still is saying the very same thing. And they placed the company under business rescue and is still under business rescue. And the business rescue practitioners, there is no communications amongst ourselves and the business rescue practitioners. Investors, they came and go. Now there's a company who's committed to retrieve the container, pay the, uh, the employees the outstanding money and re-employ them but they cannot do. That is that some of the question you're asking the government, who's got power? Because we believe that the government has got power, but it looks like the private company has got power because the owners of the mine during the accident, they don't want to let it go. And nobody's explaining to us what is the reason. So we are very happy today because Somebody is doing something. We can see that now uh, we are moving. We can feel that now we are part of South Africans. So we know the call of this, but it's a shame that uh, 26 years in democracy, our government can, because money is not the question. And the solution is not abroad, it's within the country. The mine management, they say they have got money. This new company, they've got money, they want to do it like tomorrow. But why they cannot do it? Something somewhere is not right. So, me, I'm not in the idea that now 
we need to beg this current government to do the right thing because they have failed. We cannot wait any longer. But because the laws of the country, we are all equal before the law. Those people, if our colleagues, if they are dead or alive, they must be brought back to their families if they are dead and be buried in dignity. It happened in Chile in 2010 that miners got trapped 688 meters underground. They were retrieved because the government of Chile it declared it as a national disaster. One of the big biggest companies here in South Africa played a very crucial role in Chile. The issue of Lily Mine, the miners, our colleagues, are less than 70 meters underground. For five years now, we can't retrieve them. The money is there, the machinery, all the requirements and the capabilities within the country. But because we have got, we have been, in fact, we have got the government. What, is, what we have is just offices of the government. Because ministers, previous administration, he came there, Minister Museven Zizwan, he made promises. Today we can't get hold of him. Now it's a new administration, still nothing. Three weeks back, we had officials from the Department of Mineral Resources and Arrange. They've even got a plan to retrieve the container. They are telling us what we know that there is a, the company is under business rescue. There is a potential investor. And that doesn't answer to our demands. Our demands are that bring back our colleagues because the container is retrievable. And the mine is, is not closed, it's operating, but illegal. We sent to them that there are illegal miners, they denied that. After that, uh, they fight amongst themselves and two got killed. So we don't know what to do with our government, but the only thing that we need is for our colleagues to be brought back to surface. So I cannot say more, but this is the situation we're facing every day. And we're not facing it only on the 5th of February on that commemoration uh, event. We are facing it every day. So we don't like uh, politicians or unions to come on the 5th of February and give us long speeches. We are tired of that. We need a solution. But we believe that this intervention of Action SA is going to assist us. In fact, it has assisted us because we are going to fight this. We cannot beg uh, our government because this is our government. We elected them. So now we are, we are, we are not going to, to re-elect them because they failed. Till today, there's no communication. I challenge them they, at least to say something to answer to us why these colleagues of ours cannot be brought uh, to surface because money is not the question. There is a company who's committed to score the funding and everything to retrieve the contain. So this is the South Africa we are living in. Thank you. Thanks very much, Babu Mazvogo, for that context. Um, as I call up the president of Action SA, uh, South Africa's newly formed political party that will contest elections, uh, Gauteng, uh, local elections next year, 2021, in Eguruleni, Tswane, and Johannesburg, um, Mr. Herman Mashaba. I just like all of us to remember the names of these miners. We have Yvonne Mnisi, remember her name. Priting Gambule, remember her name. And Solomon Nyarende, remember his name. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call up Mr. Herman Mashaba, the president of Action SA, our newly formed party, to really reveal the findings 
of our legal team to date. Mr. Mashaba. Thank you, Lerato. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to add my greetings uh, to members of the media, the representatives of the Lily Mine families, and to all South Africans who have been following this uh, matter and the proceedings uh, this morning. On the 22nd of January this year, we addressed the press conference uh, to announce our intention to pursue legal action and have the container with the deep trap miners at Lily Mine in Babaton retrieved. On that occasion, and again today, we have heard the heartbreaking messages conveyed by the affected families. They have expressed their pain, their suffering, and their refusal to give up on the need to provide a proper burial for their loved ones. Before I proceed, it is necessary to tell the story of the three miners and their families. Like many miners in our country, Yvonne Nisi, Pritin Kambuli, and Solomon Yandere had lived a tough life, worked themselves to exhaustion under dangerous conditions to provide modest contributions to their families. On the 5th of February 2016, they were in an above-ground container used as a lamp room where the mine collapsed and buried them 70 meters underground, under 20,000 tons of earth. Trapped inside that container were Yvonne Nisi, Tritin Kambule, and Solomon Yendera. These were our fellow South Africans, mothers, sisters, daughters, a son, a brother, and a father. Can you imagine the fear they must have felt? What was going through their minds as that container dropped, trapping them inside that darkness? Can you imagine the heat, the lack of oxygen, water, food, or communication with the outside world? Can you imagine what suffocating, suffocating to death must have felt to them? The DMRE report of 2017 found mine management responsible for this collapse. Despite previous smaller collapses, which were not reported as required in law, mining continued without the necessary safety measures recommended by rock and engineering specialists. As a matter of fact, the report found that mine, mine management continued to issue instructions for mining to continue around the pillars holding the mine, leading, leading directly to the eventual collapse on the 5th of February 2016. Yvonne Nisi, Pritin Kambuli, and Sodomo Nyendere, along with other former miners, knew the risk of their work. But they never assumed the risk of being buried alive by what has been found to be the criminally negligent greed of mind management. Five years prior, the San Jose mine collapse in Chile captured the imagination of the, of the world. Miners were trapped 700 meters underground in a mine rescue operation lasting 69 days. The Chilean president, much of his cabinet, and the international community, including our, own, our very own South African mine rescue services, camped outside the mine, lending their support to the eventual rescue of these miners in Chile. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the miners at Lily Mine enjoyed no such courtesy. A rescue operation was initiated and was called off on the 3rd of March 2016, never to be resumed. After four years of asking, petitioning, and pleading for the support of the government, the former miners and families at Lindy Mine were treated with total disdain. Furthermore, despite the findings of DMRE report, the efforts to open a criminal case against mine management were resisted. However, they eventually filed a case 
case number stroke 1, stroke 4, 2019 in 2019. Despite the fact that, that a death on, a, on duty in any mining environment is a matter of law, should have triggered a police investigation. And swift action by the Department of Labor, who are responsible for the regulation of health and safety standards in the workplace. Their silence is deafening. Not to mention, ladies and gentlemen, the outrage from the labor unions of our country. Just last week, the NPA, NPA met with the former minors and affected families to ask if they wanted to lay criminal charges, demonstrating just how casually this case has been treated. When they decided to camp outside the mine to retrieve the container themselves, a court order was obtained and enforced by heavily armed policemen to keep them away from the mine. The same policemen did not seem concerned by the syndicate of illegal mining taking place there on a daily basis or the use of petrol bombs to, to intimidate the former miners and their families, as Harry has already alluded. A business, a business rescue process that was initiated in 2017 has been allowed to be delayed and, and stalled at every turn, despite the prospective bidder for this mine coming forward with a proposal including the retrieval of this container deemed irretrievable. On the 22nd of January this year, I announced that we would be bringing together a legal team that would fight the case on behalf of these brave South Africans. I'm here today to share with you what these efforts have revealed. Our legal team initiated an application to obtain the documents that the department used to deem the container irretrievable. This was done through the promotion of Access to Information Act um, 2 of 2000. We have always believed that the question of the irretrievability of the container is the nub of the issue. We believe, the cause of the, we believe this because of two reasons. Firstly, it was, this, it was this decision that has effectively suspended the rescue operation and left the container underground for over four and a half years now. Secondly, it makes no sense that it was deemed irretrievable when prospective bidders are making it the first deliverable in their bids. We faced what we consider to be efforts to prevent our access to these uh, documents including citing that the documents were sub care with the same MPA that three years later were unaware of the criminal charges already been laid. Our legal team eventually obtained the documents on the 20th of August 2020, a few days before the expiry of uh, the application. After extensive analysis of these documents, we have made the following discovery. The report and its documentation, despite being the basis of the conclusion that the container is irretrievable, has very little to do with irretrievability. It focuses on the events leading to the collapse of the mine in great detail. The only reference to the irretrievability of the container is located in the findings of the report. No evidence or documents exist in the 500-page report or its annexures to substantiate these findings. Despite claims of the existence of the report by rock and engineering uh, specialists, no mention is made of such a report or any of the findings. For all intents and purposes, it does not exist. What this means is that the decision to deem the container irretrievable, while no doubt based on something, was not based on a professional assessment of the mine. What this means is that the cost of retrieving the container, which have been bended around, have been based on propaganda to support the case that, retrieval, uh, that retrievable, uh, retrieving the container is impossible. What this means is that these former miners, their families, members of the media, our parliament, and the South African people, have been subjected to one of the most elaborate lies in the history of our nation. I'm here today, alongside these brave South Africans, to announce that our legal teams 
will now begin the work of implementing a legal strategy that will force our government to retrieve that container. I'm assured that in the first half of next year, we will be in court. When that, when the day comes, what I can tell you is this. We will achieve a court order instructing the DMR to retrieve that container. We will argue the need for a court to find a conduct of DMR to be represent, uh, reprehensible and to compel the department to identify those responsible for the perpetration of this lie. We will be writing to the Parliamentary Standing Committee, com uh, Portfolio Committee on Minerals and Energy to explain the dishonesty of the DMR in accounting for this matter in Parliament. I have already written to the National Director of Public Prosecutions, Ms. Shamila Batoi, and requested her to provide an understanding of progress towards a criminal prosecution. I would like to take this opportunity to make a few and very important statements. Firstly, and most importantly, I would like to apologize to the former miners and families at Mlele Mine for what they've endured and how the, our government has deceived them. Secondly, I would like to convey to our government my absolute refusal to peg down on this matter. If you are counting on me, breaking a promise to the people of Lily Mine or losing interest in this matter, you are mistaken because I will not stop until we see justice for them. Finally, to the people of South Africa, you may not understand the plight of miners or regard this mine to be in the far-flung reaches of Pumalanga, but I need to assure you that the plight of these brave South Africans actually matters. Today, it is them fighting against the government for the most basic of constitutional rights to justice and dignity. But tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, it may be you, a member of your family or mine for that matter. The only way we will ever become the nation that we were meant to be is when South Africans unite behind their fellow countrymen and women and when they are being mistreated by their government. I ask you, in fact, I plead with you to join me in fighting for the people of Lily Mine, to afford them the dignity of retrieving that container, to afford their loved ones a proper burial, and to ensure that this, those responsible for this tragedy account for what they've done to our fellow South Africans and really put our country in a totally embarrassing situation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mashaba. You know, it's very refreshing uh, to have someone like you be true to their word. Um, thank you for your commitment to the families of the Lily Miners who continue to be trapped underground, entombed in that fallen container. Ladies and gentlemen, there can be no, absolutely no doubt that that container should and must be retrieved. And now I'd like to call uh, the leader of our legal team, Attorney Wendell Bloom, who will give us the legal perspective. Thank you, everyone, and good morning. Um, and the perspective that, that I'm going to give is is one that um, latches on to what um, Mr. Mashaba has indicated um, in, his, in his earlier address to us. And what is important to know is that um, I was with the families in, in, in Parliament in February of this year, and the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy again um, gave the indication that to the par Parliamentary Portfolio Committee that this container is irretrievable. Now where they get this finding from is based on a March 2018 report that forms part of an inquiry into the incident. And the extent of that finding was um, with regards to irretrievability was ostensibly in the entire length and breadth of the report 
a one paragraph two liner that basically says that the container is irretrievable. Now one has to understand the ambit of that inquiry of 2017, 2018. And if one understands that, you'll have an understanding that the purpose of the um, report and the inquiry was to investigate injury and death of people coupled with an inquiry as to what is the history of this mine with regards to these types of incidents. So what we have is, we ostensibly have a inquiry that purports to be one that makes a decisive finding on the irretrievability of a container, among other things. But yet the only reference to irretrievability in the entire report is two site visits within a month after the incident. And those site visits was sort of a walkabout, just looking at the, at, at, at the mine and uh, making a decision based on the walkabout that this container is irretrievable. The mine inquiry then focuses on a whole range of things with regards to um, the structure of the mine, with regards to the culpability of the mine management. And then in the end, it makes a finding that um, the container is irretrievable. Why am I giving you this history? And why is this important? Here are families. I might be speaking as a legal representative, but I too have a family. And I too feel for people that have been shortchanged by a government based on a report that does no scientific investigation, and this is the nub, does no scientific investigation into whether this container can be retrieved, yet it makes a finding on the irretrievability of the container. I'm gonna say that again. We have an inquiry that makes no scientific inquiry and investigation into the irretrievability of the container yet it makes a finding that the container is irretrievable. Why are we here today? We are here today, amongst other things, to tell you that this family and these families have been allowed to suffer based on a finding that a department, a government department stands by that this container is irretrievable, that if they should read their own report, they'd find that there is no basis that they themselves found that this container, based on science, based on research, that this container is irretrievable. And they've kept the container there, based on a one-liner that it's too dangerous. In fact, the entire statement centers around it's too unstable, it's too dangerous. We are saying that cannot be. We are saying that will not be allowed. We are saying going forward in terms of the legal approach of which at this juncture we are not going to get into because we are busy, we are in the throes of that legal approach. But what we are saying to you is that this matter is going to be dealt with where scientific evidence will demonstrate that this container is retrievable. We are embarking on a legal approach that will force this government that has assisted people in Chile in 2010 to retrieve bodies hundreds of meters under the ground, but is slack in retrieving bodies a few meters underground in its own country. And that's the basis for our legal approach to say to this government, at, as we stand at the moment, you have no basis whatsoever to tell us that this container is irretrievable. And if you do so, demonstrate to us where are your findings so that we can assess those findings, so that we can challenge those findings. People, there are no findings. There's just a one-liner that says, we did a site visit, we looked around, it looks unstable, and therefore the container is irretrievable. And what in essence that says to the families is that, sorry people, 
We can do nothing for your families. We did no assessment. And we have nothing to say to you or to assist you with in retrieving your family members. And we are saying, from a legal perspective, that cannot be and that will not be allowed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wendell. Um, thank you very much for your, you and your team's um, hard work that you've put into this case. We have absolute confidence that the remains of Pritin Gambule, Yvonne Mnisi, and Solomon Yarende will be returned to their families for a proper send-off, as we all do for all of the people that we love. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would I'll open the floor for questions that you may ask our panel. I will take, uh, there is a roving mic at the back. Um, please ensure that you state your name and the organization that you represent. Please state your, your full name. We will see how the round of questions goes, um, whether or not we will take one at a time or we'll take a group of questions at a time. And also please state um, who your question is directed towards. Thank you. Yes. I just wanted to ask what the government have to gain by lying about the retrievability of the container and why would what do they gain by not wanting to, to get these bodies back and get the families closure? Is it too expensive? Is it a money problem? What is it that would make our government essentially lie to these families? Who are you directing your question to? Legal. Anyone? Okay. All right. Um, can we have a, a mic for here in the front so that our panel can have um, audibility when they're responding? Thank you. Uh, no, I'll come Do you want to come here? Okay. So we'll take a couple of questions at a time. Hi, um, Natasha K here from um, SABC News. I just Maybe on the side of the family, in regards of these new revelations, um, if one family member could just perhaps give us a reaction. And um, just in regards of Dean's question, um, Mr. Mashabaghe, given the departments, both departments, until the 4th of August, um, to actually respond to you and you know, to prove that the container is actually retrievable, in light of these new revelations now, um, has there been a response from government side? I'll take the last question for this round. Anyone? Okay, Mr. Mashab. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start uh, with the question from uh, ENCA uh, as to what uh, government uh, actually um, has to gain by lying to the nation and lying to the f three families and the affected minors. I really, that's a question that we all are seeking. It just does not make sense because every time I engage with these um, families, from day one when I visited the mine, you know, it's so that I think God works in mysterious ways because when um, we were just starting the people's dialogue, when Harry, um, I don't know how he got hold of my the WhatsApp and sent me the, the WhatsApp requesting uh, um, uh, to talk to me. And I gave him a call. And what he related to me over the phone actually scared me. I've always known about uh, this um, Lily mine tragedy, but I did not really have the insight like uh, all of us as South Africans living here in Johannesburg. You see it from time to time in the papers and uh, all, at la all along we believed what uh, government uh, communicated to us, in particular in the sense that this mine belonged to a private company. Until obviously I visited the mine and uh, I cried inside, and I still do. I think the way Harry related uh, the, 
the events. Uh, he's got the whole thing to, uh, like it's, uh, it's part of his life. I tell you, by the time Harry finished, I said, look, Harry and the families, let us not waste any time. This matter, it's really just too complex. It's got a lot that's hidden. And that's why I'm always to them. I said, look, the best way to unearth this is to really get a legal team to do proper investigation because uh, you've been lied to for so long and I don't want to really sit here and still play games with you. Up to today, I find it extremely strange that uh, the department can cover up for a private company. They've had visits by the former minister, minister of the department. They've had to visit at the mine immediately out, uh, after the collapse. By then, um, the premier of um, Bumalanga, the current uh, deputy president, it is there on the media, you can see uh, the, the deputy president of the country, at the time the premier, making commitments to them that um, that container will be retrieved. I've communicated on numerous occasions uh, to the new minister of the department until our legal team had to actually apply it, uh, for PI Act to be invoked to get the documentations. Because from day one, I just really had a sense that uh, from what um, Harry and the family told me about this mine and, uh, and the developments, I had a suspicion immediately, I said, guys, I don't really personally believe there's a, um, there's a uh, scientific report that proves that this container cannot be retrieved. Moreover, you have already another company that's bidding for this mine, making one of their main co uh, 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 condition is to retrieve this container before they start mining. Now, how then the government is saying this container cannot be retrieved? But in the meantime, they don't have any documentation to prove uh, um, that this container cannot be retrieved. You can't just really visit the mine and you decide um, subjectively that it is, it is too dangerous. In the meantime, you've got three lives underground, as I've already indicated. Department of Labor, as you're aware, have been an employer for many years. They are, it is one of the departments responsible for health and safety in any work environment. We've got the NPA, we've got our law enforcement agencies. In the case of death, like in this manner, where prosecution has to happen. I mean, I could not believe it last week. When we had a briefing with our lawyers, uh, we brought Harry over. When he said, uh, I'm shocked. The families we, uh, had a meeting with um, our law enforcement agencies and the NPA asking the families now whether they want to open a case. Where in the world have you ever heard of a thing like this? People get killed. The police ask you if you want to lay a criminal charge. It can only happen in the new South Africa. In the meantime, the case was already open. I gave you the case uh, that they opened in 2019. In the beginning, they can tell you how the police were refusing to open a criminal case. Only the South African government, and I hope the president can intervene in this matter, to tell South Africans why this has happened, including actually lying to parliament about this particular matter. What we can suspect, there must be some uh, interest. What interest, we don't know, and I, I'm not really prepared to really speculate. I can have my some, some, some uh, suspicions, but I cannot at this point in time uh, uh, to confirm. But fortunate enough, we've got our legal uh, team led by uh, Advocate um, uh, Bloom, who's working with senior counsel I can just show you without any doubt that um, the truth will one day come out. Like we've now read, can confirm that um, 
the confirmation by government uh, and DMR in particular that this container is irretrievable, it's a lie. It's one of the biggest lies ever to really happen to this nation, including parliament. So I don't really know why this government, that I would really suggest uh, that um, we must actually ask the government to assist us in this case as to why they are protecting the, a private uh, company um, to, uh, with such um, an unfortunate uh, situation. Natasha, your response, um, uh, your question, by the way, what was it about? Oh, I see. Okay. No, thank you. I, I think I've uh, obviously already dealt uh, with this matter. Uh, I think we, we had to use, uh, the, our legal team can tell you how uh, he had to use um, uh, the PI Act to really get the information. And uh, the process, I think I'm, I'll leave it to Wendell to, Wendell to really take them through the, the frustration and the documents uh, actually presented to them two days uh, uh, before the, the deadline for, for us to go to court. And uh, you can imagine the cost of uh, having a team. I don't know how many teams uh, he had to put in charge. It had a massive cost to us to go through documents which literally wasted their time because what they were given is not what uh, they, they asked for. So that uh, it's really very unfortunate. Wendell, can you really take them uh, through? how you, and what you, how the process you went through. Thank you, Mr. Mashaba. Um, before I um, conclude Nat Natasha's question, I just want to latch on to Slindile's question earlier. Um, and it's, it's an important question. And why I started my speech off with the February parliamentary presentation is that um, what, what appears to be the agenda? What appears to be the reasoning behind all of this? I can assure you that the reasoning is singular. There's been a finding in February 20, in March 2018, that says the container is irretrievable, meaning that nothing since then has been done by the Department of Minerals and Mineral Resources and Energy to lift a finger to say, let us look at this from a different perspective. So if anybody was asking the question um, as to how can we retrieve, they will demonstrate their report and say, but it says it's irretrievable. And that's where it stopped. We were in Parliament this year um, in February. The exact same explanation was given. So just to conclude and to, uh, on that question, the, the, the only thing that we have here is a department that says, well, if you want to talk about Lily Mine, here's a report. And if you look at the report on page 44, it says the container is irretrievable. End of story. That's the extent. What, what that means in terms of their intent, I cannot tell you, as Mr. Mashaba has indicated to you, but it, it's basically just the stern and firm reliance on, um, on a report that says the container is irretrievable full well knowing that there's no scientific evidence to back up that finding. And that's where it stopped. I hope that answers your, your, your question to an extent. Back to um, Natasha's question and the, the, the issue of the, the legal processes. What it entailed up to this point, um, Natasha, was um, obtaining what we have was the, the, the report that we keep referring to is the inquiry just so that we understand. That inquiry makes reference to a range of annexures upon which the findings in the report have been based. The report was a public document, it was available. The annexures were not. We had to apply to have a look at these annexures to be able to establish what is the basis for your finding. Where, how do you come to the reasoning that this container is irretrievable and there's a whole range there's about almost um, 105 annexures that are referred to in the report but we didn't have access to that we asked for it we didn't get it 
We then had to bring what is called a PIA application, um, which we did, and there were many delays in trying to get the documentation. Obviously, it, it increases the anxiety of the family as to why don't they want to reveal what, what is contained in the document. We insisted and we, we wrote to them with great frustration. Eventually, the documentation came. We did our analysis of the documentation. So, what you ultimately had is, on the one hand, you had a report that makes a two-line of finding that the container is irretrievable. Then you have a whole range of annexures where one wants to establish, if you look at these annexures, is there anything within those annexures that speaks to the irretrievability or retrievability of these containers? And what we are saying to you is there's none. There, there's <laughs> the, this, this event happened in February 2016. The entire length and breadth of the annexures that pertain to the findings are all, all of them predate the collapse of the container. So there's nothing that comes after the, the collapse of the, of the container to say, based on science, we find that this is what we do with rock, this is what we do with the movement of the crown pillar, nothing. The entire report is based on events before the incident and a finding based on what the mine should have done. So uh, it's important that you get that context. This is why we're sitting here. So, and it ties up, up again with the important question Slindile raised that um, here's a department that says we can't retrieve this container. Um, the entire documents that they rely on relate to events and annexures that predate the actual incident. And on that basis, they say to the nation that this cannot be retrieved, and that's where we are. In terms of legal processes, the legal process, Natasha, that we undertook at this point was to obtain the documentation. What we now have at this point, which we're not going to delve into too much, understandably, as you can understand, is, 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 is further discussions with our, with, 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 our, with our senior counsel about this matter in terms of legal processes and the approach in getting our own legal and scientific view about the retrievability of the container and then using that as a platform through legal forums to get our government to retrieve the container. And that's where we are. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Mr. Mazabugo? Would you like to give the family's perspective on the findings? Yes, uh, like I've said uh, earlier on, that uh, we uh, as the families, this issue is on us every day. So now what I can say, we are far more better than before. Because before, that's why I said we, we, we don't believe that we, we have a government. Because uh, how can we say that? Because uh, there's no response, there's no communication. Like just now, uh, Mr. Bloom has uh, alluded that uh, the inquiry, we know we held the inquiry, we've been there, but it doesn't communicate the way forward. It doesn't answer to our call for the container to be retrieved. It just said that there, is, there was a rock engineer uh, who said uh, the mine is going to collapse because the, rock, the, 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 the strength of the rock uh, is not a good or in quality. So that's why it collapsed. People were told, the management were told. What we need to know is that the management of the company, they violated the Mine Health and Safety Act and now they are scot free. And being scot free, they are the ones who are holding a, our success in fact, they are holding everybody hostage, including our government. Because our position is that the, our government, because they have all the powers 
to compel the owners of the mine to give the buying company a, a go ahead. We shouldn't be sitting here. But they cannot do that. Okay, it's fine, they cannot do that. Let them explain to us in South Africa as a whole why they cannot do that. That is what we are calling for. That is what we are asking for. Whether there are experts involved, you see, we are not that much in the technicality of it. What we're looking, we're looking upon our government. Government has got everything, all the, uh, 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 what you call the, the facilities to do whatever in the country. The government's got 100% responsibility to govern. But in this issue of Lily Mine, there is nothing that has ever been said by the government in terms of retrieving the container. Why our government is quiet, is doing nothing, is saying nothing. That is why our position is clear that we don't believe we have a government. We know that there is a offices of DMR, there is a home office where we need the ID. But practically and physically, there's no government because since uh, the mine collapsed, the government, the only thing that they've ever said based on, we don't know that the container is not uh, retrievable. Yet illegal minings are, uh, miners are going in the very same mine and blasting because we are staying there, we are there, and they, they are, nothing, nothing is happening. So that's why we are calling upon our government to intervene, at least tell South Africa and the world what is the problem. Why can't we do like the government of Chile did? So we are confused. We, we've got more questions than answers to our government. Please, government of the people, intervene, say something, do something. The container is retrievable. We have been stopped by the government to do it ourselves because we can do it. And if our government cannot do it, let them give us authority. We'll have our own experts, maybe at our own expense, we'll do it because our government is failing us. Thank you very much. Any more questions from anyone? Um, we'll have Slendula once again. Mr. Shortland, for me, what's the process that's going to unfold from now on? Do we go to the High Court? Do we go to the Constitutional Court? Is there, um, I'm, I'm, and I'm not sure if the, the matter um, is still in the Con Court. I think I did an article around the family if it's the Con Court. Just what's going to happen or going to unfold from now? Wendell? Just to provide um, perspective to that, um, we, without obviously going into much in terms of the legal, the legal approach, the, the matter once we have our own um, expert evidence, um, we are not experts on mining. We need ex people to give us that guidance. Once we do that, we do an assessment of what they say vis-a-vis -vis the findings of the mine, and then it would then be normal court proceedings that would proceed in proceed in the high court and then as you would know um, those proceedings then take a life of its own in terms of um, a legal approach and um, if we are successful there then we are successful um, should the um, DMR be not be happy with whatever findings I can't comment on that but we then know what, what what the creature then becomes. But to answer your question, the legal approach would be to get those, to get our own findings, and then um, to demonstrate that um, the container is irretrievable and say to the DMRE, this container is irretrievable. If they don't agree, then we shall see each other in court. Thanks very much, Wendell. Um, any more questions? The final round. All right. Um, thank you very much once again. Um, I'd like to 
thank re the representatives of the Mnisi, Kambule, and Yarende families uh, for traveling all the way out here to address us this morning. Thank you very much, Bob Heri, also for your presence here with us this morning. Thank you to all of you who represent the media. Uh, thank you for your coverage. We appreciate that because without your ability to tell the stories of South Africans, absolutely nobody would know what is happening. So we thank you very much for your presence and for your being responsive um, to this invitation to the press conference. Thank you. Thank you, Wendell, um, and our legal team for all of the hard work. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Mashaba, for your hard work. We appreciate you. Um, it is our hope that you know you will help us ensure that we get this matter to reach its logical conclusion and get these miners retrie retrieved from being trapped underground. Um, should you wish to have any further follow-up um, conversations, one-on-ones with the families or with Mr. Mashaba or with um, Wendell, please let us know. Reach me at lerato at actionsa.org.za or my phone number 079-014-2011. You're also welcome to visit our website, uh, actionsa.org.za. Um, all of the content that we presented here today will be posted there. Thank you very much.